Welcome back, everybody, to another Code Peterson tutorial. Doing some more GB Studio. And shout out to Stephen Ludgate, who had the suggestion. How about we do a tutorial with collision groups? That's a great idea. I will use this as a way to show you how they work and what they do. And I do have some kind of questions regarding them myself, and I'll kind of show you those as we get through this tutorial. Um, when I think of a collision group, if you've ever used Construct 2 or Construct 3, they have families where you can take different sprites and group them. And basically, all those sprites in the same family kind of behave similarly. This is similar to that, just not as like robust of a feature set for that. But here we go. Uh, to begin with, I have this simple layout. We just have a character here. And I have up here an enemy sprite. It's like a fire flame that shoots kind of a fireball type thing. Down here we have just a flame that sits there. And then we, here we have a coin. And then my character has arrows that it can fire. And that's kind of what we have to show you how this works. So to begin with, if I had multiple coins on here, for example, you know, and there's this coin on here, and I could say this coin is going to be a collision group one. All right. And you'll notice when you start off it, when it says none for the collision group, you can interact with it, which means you can go over to that and push whatever key that allows you to interact with that object. Most cases, it's going to open up a dialogue or something like that. But in this case, uh, if I want to, I could go over here to a collision group and it changes and it says on hit. In other words, when it collides with something, and then we have some options here. It can collide with other group one objects. It can collide with group two objects. It can collide with group three objects. Or what happens when it hits the player, which is our first player here. All right, so what we could do for that is we could add an event and I will put on here display dialog. All right, and I'll type in here, you got a coin. Now, if I wanted to, I could make that be a variable. I could say something like add or increment variable. I could search for that and then increase the variable if I wanted to keep track of my money. Uh, but for this, I'll just kind of use this as a faster demonstration to show you how it works all right so we could do that where we could say every time uh, that we collide with this object on here then then that's going to happen and then i would have to duplicate that now the other thing is instead of having that listed with every single coin, what I can do is I could select my scene one. And then when I go to my main character here and go on player hit. And then in here, I can look around here and I could go here to group and I could select this and I could do the same thing. I could just display dialogue. And I could type in, you got a coin. All right. Now, why does that why is that a benefit? Well, for the main reason, the main point why it is a benefit is because if we have multiple coins out here, that little line of code there, that little display dialog is really only having one instance of every time we collide with a one. If we have multiple coins and it has this on here, then it has to call that for every coin. So if, if you have a lot going on with each of your images or with each of your sprites or each of your characters or whatever you want to call those, that could potentially slow down your game and it makes it just a little less effective. So because we have that on there, I can go here to my coin and I'm going to remove this out of here. I'm going to delete this event. Because over here, when I click on scene one and I go on player hit with the group one 
and remember this, we gave a group one over here. So that's how, that's how we know that is correct. Then it's going to say you got a coin. All right. Now, because I have that, I can select that coin, control C, control V, control V. And I'm going to run my program. And up here, it says I got a coin. Here it says I got a coin. Here it says I got a coin. So that is only in there once. Now here is kind of the weird thing, all right? This is what I don't really understand because it seems a little bit counterproductive. And maybe this is something that GB Studios is working on but to polish it up, I don't really know. But here's kind of my problem a little bit where, you know, we should be encouraged to want to use these collision groups because we could see that advantage of doing the code once instead of having to do the code three times, right? Well, here is the drawback. If I go back here and I say player on hit with group one, and I want to pick up the coin, right? I don't want the coin to be there forever. So I'll go here and I will search for the activate actor. And when I go in here, I would have to select each individual coin here, right? So this is kind of weird to me. Why don't they just have, you know, whatever player that you collide with, you know? So for example, if I go here and I select actor one, I have to choose one of those three. You know, in construct, if I say collide with a family, this happens, and then that happens, that event happens to whichever one you collide with, as long as it's to any one of those in the family. Here I go here and I pick this up and see because my first actor was this one over here. That one disappeared. I just think there should be some way to where in here it just says, like, whatever that instance is, you know, that you collide. That's the one that should deactivate. So because of that, to make those disappear, I do have to go into each one of these coins. And then I can go deactivate actor and when i click here see this it says self actor four and then you have actor one actor four and actor five so why can't i have my character run into a collision group of one and have it be an option of that self uh for that one if you know i hope what i'm trying to say makes sense with that it's just it's a little bit weird and you don't really see that behavior with any other of these type of game engines that I've played around with. I'm not the most experienced with them, but to me, that's just a little bit strange. Um, so, yeah, over here, I would have to say, not on hit with group one, sorry. I need to say on hit with player, when the coin's on hit with the player, deactivate self. And then when I go over to this one, deactivate self. And then I go to this one and deactivate self. So when I go in here and run that, now it's gonna work the way it's supposed to. You know, I got the coin, I got that coin, I got that coin. Kind of strange. All right, now the next part of this, you know, because we have, we did have to put that part in the code three times. So hopefully that's something they're working on. You know, it's just, to me, it's odd. All right, so the next thing that we can do is we can say when our, when our projectile, my arrow in other words, and I'm going to delete these out of the way those two so here i have the scene one selected and i'm going to go on to on in it and i put this thing in here launch projectile the arrow and it's coming from the player 
and it's in the ink actor direction. And we've done that in some of my other tutorials. Lifetime, all that. Okay, but then I have these collision group things. So what do I want to collide these with? So if you remember these flames here, I want to give them a collision group. All right, we already gave the coin a collision group of one. Okay, so I'm going to give the flame a collision group of two. And I'm going to give this flame a collision group of two. And then if I select my scene one, then I can choose a collision group for my arrow. So since I already have my enemies kind of saying I want those all to be collision group two, and I want all coins uh, to be a collision group of one, my last one that I have available is collision group three. All right, and that's what's going to be the collision group of this arrow. So three is the collision group. And then over here, I can choose what I want it to collide with. All right, if I want to, I could have it collide with the player. I could have it collide with the coin, which is um, collision group one on there. And then if I want to, I could also have it, which would make most sense to have it collide with a collision group two, which is my enemies. Okay. On here, there's this option that says destroy on hit. So that's kind of a useful thing to have on there also so that it doesn't just keep traveling through. It, it disappears when it hits an object. Okay, so right now we have an arrow, which is a collision group three, which can collide with one or two, and it's going to destroy on hit. Now if I go to my enemy here, I can go to on hit with the group three and I can deactivate self and then down here when it's when this one's in collision I can deactivate self also so now when I use this the arrow disappears and then it hits that. And then this up here, it's able to collide with that. And here, the arrow disappears. But I didn't say that I want the coin to disappear in there. So that kind of shows you how that behaves differently than the other collision groups. All right. Now, here's the other thing that's a little bit strange to me with collision groups. Um, this enemy up here, when I go to on update i give it a wait for five seconds and launch a projectile and this in here is going to be launching that fireball i'm giving that fireball a collision group of three which is the same collision group as ours and then here it can collide with one but i'm actually going to take that out and i'm going to say what happens if this collides with a collision group of three and they destroy on hit. So I asked to you all out there, if this is a collision group of three and it collides with other collision groups of three and it destroys on hits, and that's with the fireball. And then I go here to my arrow, which is a collision group of three. And now I'm going to say, you know what? Yes, it can collide with a collision group of three also. And it's going to destroy on hit. What would you hypothesize would happen when my arrow hits that fireball? In my mind, that should make them both disappear. But if I run this program here, we'll wait for it to launch the projectile. And it goes right through it. See, so to me, that's kind of a weird thing. Now, and again, it, it went through me, but if I go over here, it's because I didn't say it could collide with a player. But if I say collide with player and I run this program,
Okay, and then it disappears. So that kind of is what collision groups are. It's a way that's supposed to allow us to treat multiple objects the same so we don't have to recode things over and over. And it does save us a little bit of code, you know, but it also still requires us to go back in and make certain little little scripts for each of those objects, which to me just seems counterproductive. So if anybody can answer that, you know, is there a way where we can have it to where we don't have to say each individual object is deactivated every time? And is there a way when two projectiles are the same collision group and they collide with the same collision group and they're supposed to destroy on hit, is there a reason why they're not destroying? So if anybody knows that and can answer that also, you know, that would be good to know. But, you know, for these, I use them when I can just because it does save room and it makes the game a little more efficient. But there still are some things that I think could make it better. I hope that answers some questions and gives you some things to play around with. I probably asked more questions than what I had answers for. But let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know how you've used it with your games. I'd be curious to know and see if, if it's just me that's off base with this. And as always, I really appreciate you all watching. I appreciate the feedback we've been getting. And I've, I've been trying to be more active in with this community on this YouTube page. And I've been really enjoying it. So I hope you have too. And we'll hopefully catch you on the next tutorial video.